welcome to the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology. All oh, they're dancing here tonight. It's free ticket Friday for students and a big crowd is expected because of that as the Tigers are back home to face Bentley. Number 16 for RIT is Eric Brown. He's had a remarkable season so far. Brown tied for fifth nationally with 16 goals on the year. The Keene, Ontario native has scored 32 goals over the last 60 games. We'll see if he can spark the Tiger offense again here tonight. You are watching RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Presented by Taylor the Builders. And over the next half hour, we'll talk live with RIT head coach Wayne Wilson. And our John DeTulio goes one on one with goaltender Ian Andriano, who will once again be in net when the puck drops here at 7.05. Good evening, I'm Kevin Roach, and welcome to RIT Sports Zone pregame live from our home here just behind section 109 at the Gene Policini Center. Well, after splitting a pair of games with first place Canisius, RIT traveled to Worcester, Massachusetts last weekend to face Atlantic Hockey's other first place team. The Tigers visiting Holy Cross last Friday night, a team they split with back here the first weekend in December. First period Crusaders with a bunch of chances early on. Scott Pooley finally finds TJ Moore right in front and he would put Holy Cross up one nothing. Second period Crusaders on the power play. They had six chances on the night. This would be the only one they would convert on as Danny Lopez gets the goal. It was 2-0 Holy Cross. Under two minutes to play in the period, Crusaders will enter the zone and the puck deflects right to Michael Laffin. Watch this, right to him and he takes advantage. Holy Cross would add another as they took game one last Friday by a final of four to nothing as we look inside the number. The Tigers shut out for just the second time this season as Paul Barafato stopped all 29 shots he faced to pick up the shutout. The Crusaders outshot the Tigers and they had the slight edge on special teams going one for six on the man advantage while RIT was 0 for three. Despite the loss, Ian Andriano stopped 32 in net for the Tigers. How about game two? Tigers looking to salvage the trip with a split last Saturday night. First period, RIT would strike for Sean Cameron. The wraparound to beat Paul Barafato right there. His third on the year, and that would give the Tigers the early 1-0 lead. Second period, Tigers, an odd man rush here. Jordan Peacock is going to find Chase Norris, and it's only Norris's second on the year, but a big one at that for him. It was 2-0 RIT. Holy Cross would answer, though. What a move here. Scott Pooley, Andriano making the stop, but TJ Moore there for the putback, and it was 2-1 Tigers after two in the third. Just over five minutes to play. Crusaders with traffic in front and more feeding Kevin Girard to tie the game at two, under two to play. Great look up ice by Regan Seferling to Jordan Peacock. He nets the game winner, second game winner on the year. Tigers split with the other first place team after a 3-2 victory last Saturday night. So the Tigers picked up a much needed two points with the win. RIT outshot Holy Cross 49 to 28 and they dominated the Crusaders on faceoffs. Tigers got scoring from guys who've been fairly quiet this season so that is a definite plus for head coach Wayne Wilson and his staff and Ian Andriano stopped 26 to pick up his second career victory. It was a good day, way to end the month of January for RIT but overall not a great month for the Tigers as they went just two, six, and one as we enter the final month of the regular season. Wayne Wilson told us earlier this week he's looking for consistency, and most importantly, he's looking for wins. The head coach standing by live now with our John Natulio. John? Hi, Kevin, thanks so much, Wayne. This is normally your month. This is where RIT plays their best. What do you have to do to start this month off right against Bentley? Well, we've got to get off to a good start tonight, obviously. Uh, that's stated in the obvious, but we haven't uh, done so as much, particularly Friday nights. We want to be a, a better team Friday night, play with more sense of urgency tonight than we have in the in the past Fridays here, and then and then go from there. But uh, we've always put ourselves back backs up against the wall with our Friday night play and how to have a better Saturday night. Getting that split last weekend, what's that do confidence-wise? Where is this team right now? Well, it, all it does is tell us that we can play with anyone, and I, and I think the league's at that point now. Anyone can beat anyone. We've been talking about that all year. It's like a broken record. But like I said, you know, for us, you know, we've, we've just had to cut, respond to a, a not a bad uh, Friday night, but an average Friday night, and we've got to play a, a good Friday night here, and that's our focus right now. When you look at Bentley, they're 4-0 in this building. What do you have to do tonight? Why do you think Bentley's been so successful in this building? I don't know. We've uh, had reverse fortunes in each other's building. You know, last year we were, we won both games there. They won both games here. So, you know, we want to reverse that. We got to take care of home ice with uh, only four home ice games left uh, for the month. So, 
you know, it starts here tonight. But uh, our emphasis is playing well tonight, You're putting our best foot forward. We want to be the aggressor. I want to get people in pucks to the net and then really want to make them fight to get their ways uh, from their end down to our end. Where you start playing your best hockey is February. Well, we're looking forward to it, and we're going to need to if we want to uh, get that first round by. That's head coach Wayne Wilson here with the RIT Tigers. Kevin, let's send it back up to you. All right, John, thanks so much. Tigers looking to make their move now. Meanwhile, the Bentley Falcons arrived in town last night for what will be their final road series of the regular season. After this weekend, they'll finish up February with five games on home ice, including their final three at their brand new 2,000 seat on campus arena. The Falcons were out on the ice here at the Policini Center this morning for a brief morning skate. Bentley was on a roll before the new year, going to perfect 6-0 and with wins over Robert Morris, AIC, UMass Lowell, Brown, and Dartmouth. But since the calendar flipped to 2018, the Falcons have really struggled, winning just once in their last 10 games. We've, we've had some emotional swings this year. We started off 1-7-3, and three, then we rattled off 6-0-1 stretch through seven games, and we came back from break and, and uh, started from scratch again. Uh, we, we had trouble, trouble getting the, putting the puck in the net, and uh, we had some injuries over the last month, which, which we paid the price with a little bit. We're starting to get some guys back healthy now, uh, but we're very excited about this final push here. We feel really good about the team. Feel really, really good about what we can accomplish here in this next month. As bad as things went in January, you're right in this, in this league. It's wide open this year. Yeah, it's definitely wide open, and you hear that more and more across college hockey with the parity in college hockey. But, you know, we've played pretty much almost every team this, this year, and there's not a whole lot of difference between most teams. You know, so pretty much for goaltending and special teams each night is going to be really important here. Yeah, Bentley trying to get things turned around as we enter the final month of the regular th uh, season, and things continue to be tight in Atlantic hockey, as both coaches mentioned. Canisius and Holy Cross sit tied for first place with 26 points. However, check out the top five, all separated by just four points heading into tonight. RIT tied for seventh with Army, a team they swept back in October. So if the playoffs began today, Tigers would host Bentley in a best-of-three first-round series. Of course, Tigers hoping to finish in the top five at least, which would assure them a first round by and when you get to february all the games are big this morning 10 35 a.m start robert morris getting it done at sacred heart four to one the final to move just two points out of first place tigers visit them down at pittsburgh next weekend elsewhere in the league tonight niagara visits army west point it's a first place showdown at the harbor center between canisius and holy cross that one's set to face off at 7 35 while air force and aic will get started out in colorado springs just after nine o'clock our time here tonight. Well, still to come on the program, Wayne Wilson has decided to stick with the hot hand in net. Our John DeTulio went one on one with Ian Andriano earlier this week, and that conversation is on the way. Plus, he was the hero last Saturday night in Worcester, Mass., as the Tigers earned a split with first place Holy Cross. Number 25 is Jordan Peacock, and he will join our Kim Burnson next. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Welcome back to RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Hard to believe we've entered the final month of the regular season. RIT with just nine games left starting here tonight with Bentley. If you're just tuning in, to, the Tigers are coming off back-to-back -back splits against the league's two best teams in Canisius and Holy Cross. The Falcons split a pair with Canisius last weekend in Massachusetts. For the fifth straight game, the Tigers will start Ian Andriano. He's gonna get the call for head coach Wayne Wilson and his staff. Andriano is two and two since taking over the starting duties two weeks ago. At 89, his save percentage is still below where the coaching staff would like to see it, but they believe he's provided a calming presence in the net. They like the way he's responded, the way the team has responded as well. So he is the guy right now for RIT. On the other side, the guy for much of the season has been the sophomore Aiden Polino, but Ryan Soderquist and the Bentley staff are going to start this series with senior Jason Argue in net. Argue has played in nine games this season. He is 1-4-4 four, and four on the year with a goals against average of 2.5. 9-3. Well, warm-ups are wrapping up. They've concluded for both teams. There's the horn as the players have exited the ice for their respective locker rooms. Our Kim Burnson is standing by live now with the Tigers sophomore forward Jordan Peacock, who just stepped off the ice. Kim? 
Thanks, thanks, Kevin. Jordan, uh, you've come up big late in games. You and your line mates having a lot of success, especially last Saturday scoring the game winner. What is it about those final minutes that allow you to really give that last push? Uh, I don't know, but um, I agree with you, Mar. Our line has been clicking uh, as of late. Um, we've just been playing simple, um, getting pucks in deep and moving the puck when we can. And, you know, um, Sice made a great play at, um, at the, in the neutral zone there to glove it down and get it up to me. And um, fortunately, I was just able to break in there and get a, get a shot off. So, and, and it went in. So, yeah. The last two weekends, you guys have uh, split your games with your opponents. What is it going to take to get consecutive wins tonight at home? Yeah, we just need to come out hard. Um, uh, the last couple of weekends, you know, we've, we haven't really had great starts and partly due to bad penalties, I think. Um, so I think we need to clean that up and just, just play simple, you know, and try not to overthink the game and um, play our, uh, execute our game plan. All right, thanks, Jordan. Good luck tonight. Kevin, back to you. All right, Kim, thanks so much. We'll see you throughout the broadcast here tonight on RIT Sports Zone Live. Well, RIT has made a commitment to its Division I and Division Three athletic programs, especially over the last five years. The Division I hockey teams have this beautiful facility to train and play in, and President Munson told us in the fall that the Division Three lacrosse and soccer programs may have a new facility to compete on in the near future. But the university is also making a commitment to improving its current facilities as well. Just last week, RIT baseball team, fresh off its best season in team history, unveiled its brand new locker room. The new facility made possible thanks to the generous donations by the Hearn family and Jan Proper Schreier features an expanded floor plan, custom lockers, and RIT Tiger branded furniture. Uh, I was blown away. I saw it throughout the stages because I live pretty close and um, when I saw the finished product, I was absolutely blown away. What does this mean to the program coming off uh, your best season ever to, to have a donation like this that makes this all possible? I mean, it definitely shows that people believe in us and I think we're going to use this as a stepping stone to our next, our next goals. Family and relationships is always what we talk about, right? And the, be the best way to have those is to spend time together. So it's important for the team and I really realized how important it is for recruiting. One weekend we had four recruits come in while the team was lifting. So it was just four brand new kids who had never met each other. They come into this space, they love it. It's division one material and they can play MLB the show and in half an hour they're best of friends. These people are highly sought after. They're the best, brightest, and they can play a sport. They can go to a lot of different places. So having this type of facility helps us get the best, the brightest baseball players, and that's important to winning. Yeah, the Tigers won a lot last season, a school record 33 games to be exact, and captured their first Liberty League championship and NCAA tournament bid. Now, Rob Groh and company opened the season on March 3rd, weather permitting down in Pennsylvania. Coming up tomorrow night on Pregame Live, we'll hear from the generous donors of this project who, like so many others, continue to help make things possible for our students and staff here at RIT. Uh, elsewhere tonight in RIT Athletics, some basketball here on campus at the Clark Gym and the Lady Tigers in control at the half, 45-23 up on Clarkson as they unveiled that Liberty League championship banner at the Clark Gym here tonight. And the men tip off at 8 o'clock. We'll update that during intermission for you. Well, still to come here tonight on Pregame Live, we'll share John's conversation with starting goaltender Ian Andriano. Plus, John and Jean will share their keys to tonight's game. It's all straight ahead as we get you ready for hockey night here at RIT. The Tigers and Bentley Falcons. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Back at the Ritter, game two of the best of three tonight. It's the proverbial win or go home for the Tigers tonight. Oh, it's do or die your entire season on the line. Here comes Nudie. Nudie trying to take it on himself, but it goes behind the net. Nudie still with a puck, sends it back. Well, it taps it in, we're tied at four! Nobody took out Nudie, and that leads to a goal. Guess what, Johnny, want to play a little overtime here tonight? Let's do it. All right, so we had to overtime here tonight. The Ritter in the playoffs, sudden death, and the Tigers facing elimination. Gensler takes it away. Here's an opportunity in front. Matamore with a season saving save. But Harden was turned the wrong way. He would have had a point black shot. Here's a shot. Matamore with the save. Oh, it just goes wide. Oh, that could have been it. Coming up the ice. Atkins Wilder back defensively for the RIT Tigers. Quick shot. Knocked out. Oh, it goes off the post. Kayfez almost had it. They got one shot here. Burke, quick shot. Wide in the net. We are going to have another overtime session. Yeah. Now sends 
to burn. Burn at the point, spin it. Send it right in front, and no, it's Smith, Smith! The shot in front, it's in! It's in! It's in! We'll see you tomorrow night! Pull off! Cameron Burn has won it for the RIT Tigers! Cam Burn on the doorstep. Tigers live another day. One of the best postseason series in RIT history. Of course, the Tigers went on to win game three to move on to the semis before losing in the conference title game to Air Force that year. Now, the Tigers lead the all-time series with Bentley, but the last 10 have been even at five apiece, while RIT has three conference titles. The Falcons still looking for their first. Closest they've gotten is 2006 when they finished as a runner-up to Holy Cross. Tonight marks the first of only two meetings between these two schools. This season for RIT it will be Ian Andriano in net tonight. Andriano spent the bulk of this season watching Logan Drackett and Christian Short play but back on January 16th when the Tigers got down four goals at Mercyhurst, Andriano was called upon in relief and he hasn't relinquished the job since. Joined now by John DeTulio had a chance to sit down with Ian earlier this week. John? Alright Kevin, you know, it's third time a charm for head coach Wayne Wilson and his RIT Tigers. The Tigers are now down to their third different starting goalie. It's Ian Andriano's opportunity now, and with more reps comes more confidence. Now that he's the starting goalie, he's not ready to give up the reins just that yet. There is Ian Andriano. His first start here at RIT, only his fourth game action. Let's talk about how being patient, waiting for your time and then when your number was called. Walk me through just being patient and watching you know, Logan play and watching Christian play, waiting for your number to be called. I think um, I think we've, we've all kind of done that at some point this year. I think um, it's definitely helped me um, just just basically to, to get used to, you know, kind of the level of play this is at coming, you know, coming from juniors and uh, jumping up to Division One. I. I mean, there's obviously a big jump, especially at home in front of, in front of you know, some of the best fans that I've ever played in front of. And, you know, it's a pretty cool atmosphere to play here. So definitely a lot of excitement when he, when he let me know. And I just really wanted to go out there and play my best and, uh, you know, take a, Side. Take a run at it. Nishes into the zone. Shot. Adriano with the save on Mazza. Big save with that puck. You were supporting Logan and Christian. Now they're supporting you. How supportive? And have they proved to be sounding boards for you with any kind of questions that you may have? They've been great. I mean, first thing Logan said to me when he found out, like, he looked really excited. And, you know, I was a little nervous. And you could tell he's just like, just go have fun. And it was... You know, it was nice to hear that from, from him, who like, excited about Get me getting a chance. That was really nice. Turnover Ooh. in the Tiger end, and all alone, and then standing tall is Andriano. He's looked very calm and very uh, self-assured in that. And, uh, and that's, I think, given our team a little bit of confidence. And I, and I think he's played well uh, the four Fire. games he's played. When you were recruiting Ian, what stuck out? Playoffs, I mean, his playoff numbers over the last three years are remarkable. Uh, the last two in particular, uh, when, when it's been crunch time, uh, he's really shown up for his team. He's had good regular seasons. He's had better playoffs. And uh, I think that's probably the one thing that sticks out the most. I enjoy playing uh, high level games. I mean, that's a lot of fun. That's, that's, what, you, that's what you grow up wanting to do, right? Um, but, you know, any, I think any game um, as, a, as a freshman at a, at a college is, is high pressure, um, just just based on the jump and just based on you know it's your first year. So yeah, I mean I, I enjoy playing in those atmospheres, but um, I just I just like to I was just happy to get out there and get a chance to play a little bit. Give away to McLaughlin and the shot. Andriano didn't know where it was. He holds on. Last year you had somewhat stability between the pipes. You had injuries, but you had a solid you had stability there. What's it been like this year now, Wayne, with three different starting goalies? Put it this way, they they all want to be the starter. And it's really, it's, it's up to the coaching staff to try and figure that out, uh, who we think is going to be best. And, uh, and, it, and it hasn't been easy because they've all had shown really good moments. It's just uh, the consistency factor, I think, for us. I think that's the life of a goalie, right? There's always another guy that wants to play more. Uh, only one of us can play at a time. Um, and you can't, you can't think about that too much when you're out there. I mean, yeah, for sure, there's, there's, you know, you let it go in, maybe it creeps into your head, but you gotta just block it out, because, you know, the main goal is we want, we want the two points every night. Um, we need wins, and we need points uh, in a really tight conference right now. I think the fact that he started says what we feel about him. You know, we're, we're in a situation where we've got to win every single game, so we're, we're trying to put 
the people out there that are going to, you know, give us what we think is our best chance to win. And uh, in net right now, uh, as long as Ian keeps going the way he's doing, I think he's done a very good job. And Adriano <laughs> with a huge save. <laughs> When you look at his numbers, Gene, his save percentage, 898. He'd like to be a little bit higher, but it is interesting. Back in around November, Wayne said he wanted to name a starting goalie, one goalie, by early February. It's early February, but he's not going to have a quick hook. He's going to stick with number 40. He likes the way he's playing. He thinks he's getting better with more and more time on the ice. Well, and here's the opportunity this weekend, John, because yep. after this weekend, you only have three left. If Andriano plays well this weekend, it's, it's him, right? I think if he wins this weekend and Wayne feels they can get a sweep, if they get the sweep, I think they ride him right through March. There's no question about it. This is a Bentley team, a tale of two seasons almost within the season, if you will. Bentley starting out strong, but only one win this calendar year. Uh, you know, and the, the, the scoring has been coming from different directions. Kyle Schmidt, the team captain, certainly a name that uh, is familiar to us. It seems like he's been around forever. When you look at his numbers, they're just incredible. Uh, he has 50 career goals, 108 career points, but it's a team that has that is offensively handicapped. There's no question about it. They don't get a lot of contributions from a lot of different players. If you focus in on number 20, you're going to slow down this Falcons offense, that's for sure. He's from Menonomi Falls, Wisconsin. Kyle Schmidt, our player to watch for the RIT Tigers. It's fun when they go on the power play because you know who, number 16, he's camping out in front. He's a beast. EB Eric Brown is a tough dude to move off the net. He stands right in front. He's got that big frame. He has four goals in his last three games. He's tied fifth nationally now with 16 goals. In fact, 32 goals in his last 60 games. And he's the difference maker on the power play that needs to get going this weekend. But number 16 has been consistent all season long for the Tigers. So the Tigers still need points to get up to one of those top five seeds, yes. John. What do they got to do tonight to get the two points? They got to win on Friday. It's been Friday night frights, Gino. They're 3 8 0 on Friday nights. They have not won a Friday night game since November 10th versus Robert Morse. Special delivery, they're gonna need that. The power play has been awful in January. Three for the last 32. And the Policini perfection, that's Bentley. You know Bentley's 4-0 in this building? That was the trivia yeah. question. Who do you think is 4-0 in this building? <laughs> it's Bentley of all teams. So RIT's gotta come out strong. Strong first uh, uh, period, I think is the key to that. Kevin, we're looking forward to this one tonight here on Sports Online. That should be fun. The visiting team has won the last nine. We'll see what happens here tonight. Well, still to come on the program, we'll tell you how you can get enter to win a piece of RIT hockey memorabilia as we are closing in on game time between RIT and Bentley. This is RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Back here on RIT Sports Zone pregame live. Tigers hosting Bentley here at the Policini Center where the Falcons feel right at home. As we've mentioned, Bentley a perfect 4-0 on RIT's home ice. And the visiting team has won the last nine in this series. Hey, if you're a big Tiger fan or you know someone who is, you're going to want to get your hands on this. A framed RIT Tigers jersey that has been signed by the entire 2017-18 team. All you have to do is like the RIT Sports Zone Facebook page and comment on our post about the jersey and you're entered to win. A winner will be randomly selected next weekend on February the 10th. Hey, make sure you join us tomorrow night for the finale of this two-game series between RIT and Bentley. Our coverage kicks off at 6.30 with RIT Sports Zone pregame live presented by Taylor the Builders. That comes up on CW Rochester and streaming all season long on RITSZ.com. Well, that does it for us. Thanks so much for watching. Up next, it's RIT and Bentley. John and Gene will have all the action for you, and I'll see you back here for the intermission report. Enjoy the game, everyone. RIT Sports Zone Live begins now.